The Blue Bomber gets thunderstruck. Here's a look at the Funko Mega Man Thunder Beam Mega Man. Thunder Beam joins two other Mega Mans to defeat the evil Dr. Wily, who is also included in this four-figure wave. As I go ahead and get this Mega Man measured off, I want to send out a big thank you to viewer Bill, who was very generous, extremely generous as he always is, and took the time and sent a whole bunch of these Mega Man goodies my way. According to the Ultra Megatron 5000, the Mega Man Thunder Beam stands exactly 4.4 inches in height. In centimeters, that works out to be 11.2 centimeters tall. If that height does sound familiar to you, it is because, after all, it is the exact same figure that we had a look at already with the Leaf Shield Mega Man. You'll also see, too, that I've swapped out his cannon arm in favor of his regular hands, because I think for Leaf Shield, he doesn't use the cannon uh, arm. He uses, of course, just his hands. Uh, one good way to separate for the fact that they are the exact same figure, well, of course, also it helps a lot that both the figures are so different in color to one another as well. You'll probably also see the fact that this Mega Man also shares the exact same face. So it is, in fact, the exact same figure. There's nothing different between the two. And I guess some could cry foul, but I mean, really, when it's all said and done, when it's the end of the day, of course, and you're ready to pack up shop and go home to the missus, does it really matter that Mega Man doesn't have different faces from one figure to the other? I guess, ultimately, I'm just happy the fact that we get ourselves Mega Man figures. Just That's so cool, just in itself. So yeah, there's not really much different other than I just also swapped out the cannon arm, but you can also really theoretically, I don't even say theoretically, you can swap out also Mega Man's cannon arm in favor of just a regular arm as well. I'm gonna show you what it looks like just to take it off and just to demonstrate very quite easily to take that off and just replace it with the regular robot arm. Just wiggle that back in place. I do find that getting the new arm in place is a little bit tighter, a little bit more difficult, but that's what it looks like. And there you go. It's the now exactly the same other than just a different color to the other Mega Man that we had a look at. Um, ultimately, though, I think when it comes, when it's all said and done, I'm going to keep the cannon arm on this particular Mega Man. And eventually, uh, I think when it comes to trying to think of the original Mega Man, I'll probably ultimately, I'll probably display it with the cannon arm when I eventually find that other one. So uh, then that would be making up the first three Mega Mans. And again, I don't know if this is a first and only wave, if we're supposed to get more of these. So I'm just going to pop this back off after all that effort. And actually, also while I'm at it, the other interchangeable option is you can just peg the, unpeg the hand off and you can replace it with a waving hand. You can say, hello, Dr. Light over here, Dr. Light. He's right over there. He's actually over there eating his, eating his lunch. Um, so that's the other option that you can display the figure with. I kind of really dig, in all honesty, the uh, just the, the close fist. And again, to maybe mix things up a little bit, I might ultimately just do the, uh, the open hand on the leaf shield Mega Man. So we're just going to unpeg that part of my hand and pop that back into place. There we go. So having a look at the figure, like I said, there's not a whole lot to be said that really hasn't already be, been said before when it comes to Leaf Shield Mega Man, but still a really good head sculpt. Should the face have been something that could have easily been swapped out? Uh, I guess in theory, yes. I mean, you can see that the helmet really is over top of the existing human or robot face. I guess they could have also given an option where instead of this being a full sculpt head, they could have uh, cut it right there. Just right there. You can almost even see the seam line there if I move my finger out of the way. And that could have simply just been a case where you could just pop the head right off and just replaced a different expressioned face. They really should have done that. Each Mega Man figure. Now look at me talking like I'm a toy designer. Get a load of this guy. But, I mean, really, if they had given each Mega Man, uh, of course, the weaponed uh, extensions. I'll talk about that in a second as well. But if they had given him each of the weapon's abilities, and then an interchangeable faceplate. You could have really just swapped it out with not only this Mega Man, but really any of the other ones that are available in this wave. So if there was a more angrier expression, you could do that for 
Thunderbeam Mega Man and then keep the regular face maybe for the original Blue Bomber Mega Man or again just a different face sculpt maybe like a like a jumping because I think he makes a different expression when he jumps um, that could have also been a different uh, a different expression faceplate just something that Funko could have technically done I don't want to say like I feel like the Mega Man line from Funko is kind of the bare bones. I mean, it really is, but the designs of each of the figures themselves are actually quite good. I just kind of feel like they undersold what the potential could have been for this by just adding extra things to it. Like for, again, example, if you're going to have the Thunder Beam, which I didn't really realize is a Lech Man. Lech Man. You would think it would have had electricity or something in the description of the weapon, but no, the Thunder Beam apparently is from a Lechman stage. That's why probably I couldn't remember. I'm thinking, I don't remember there being, was there a Thunder Man? I wonder if there was a Thunder Man. Uh, but something most definitely could have been added also to this as it could have given us the little electricity. Made this as, as a whole. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not devastated if the red uh, dot on the end, a considerable dot actually on the end, if that was swapped out for a hole and just simply added the electricity <laughs> probably sound a little bit better than that and then that could just plug into place I mean you really would use the exact same arm for every single Mega Man it's not like you would have to drastically you wouldn't have to make one unique mold to this figure because again you could use it with every other Mega Man that's in this wave just an FYI anyways for the figure itself I mean, really, again, there's not much that's been different to it other than just the paint. I like the gray and I love the yellow. Yellow generally is a hard paint to paint a figure because it always seems like it's never enough. It's never enough. And I think maybe one additional coat of yellow on the band here of his helmet could have maybe been afforded. Generally, uh, like I said, that's the one problem with yellow paint. It's not, it's not terrible, though. I mean, I, I see some of the gray underneath but it could have been a whole lot worse. The head sculpt, like I said, is really good. I like the little happy expression on his face. I also like these little smudgeons underneath his eyes. That's probably not the actual term for it, but I'm gonna call it that nonetheless, little smudgeons underneath there. And like, really, like I said, most of his color palette is yellow and gray. It's strange, I would have to go back and check that Mega Man, but I obviously noticed that he's got lighter gray on his neck. He's got lighter gray on his joints. And he's also got this lighter gray around his knees and specifically around his thighs. I would have thought that would have been all the same color. Some further researching from this humbled reviewer may be required to validate if that actually is true or not. Whether the lighter gray should really belong there or they just use the wrong color of gray. Then of course he's got his big giant Mega Man boots with the red underneath there. A matching color to the red that's on his Buster Cannon. Um, as for this guy's posability, it's pretty much on par with it. Well, I say it's pretty much on par. It's exactly on par to the other Mega Man figure. So his head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and you can also rock it back and forth. Kind of like that. The arms rotate all the way around. They hinge out. That's actually both arms, by the way, that hinge out. He has a bend at the elbow that works also on both arms, although it's a little... It's sometimes difficult to bend the elbow because it's so close to whatever it is you're changing out. Sometimes when you are bending the elbow inadvertently you end up popping whatever arm you didn't really want to change out at that present time bending the elbow seems to want to pop that off on its own just volunteers itself the hands if you do swap for the hands would rotate all the way around just again because of the way that they're pegged into place and even if you replaced it with say this arm it would be the exact same thing you would be able to rotate it it's a little stiffer on this but it still would be able to rotate Speaking of rotating, you got a rotation on the waist. Uh, the legs hinge forward and back. They don't hinge out as easy, I've noticed, but they are ball joints. And I think it's just it's just because of this like little ledge that's located on the side of the leg. It sort of seems to restrict, limit the fact that you can move those legs out. He has a bend at the knee, and you can also rotate where essentially, basically, that big boot, that big giant boot, connects itself to the knee. It can rotate right there. Uh, the feet also have ball joints, so you can rot rotate those back and forth, up and down, and technically all the way around. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you do have the option to do that if you so wish. 
Uh, this particular Mega Man, as well as really all the Mega Man, don't have display stands. So if you want to give them in a running pose, it's sort of a case of balancing. If you get the pose just right and you don't ask too much from it, then it will reward you and it will let the figure stand up. If you move, of course, the legs a little bit too far forward in a running pose, well, then mileage may vary as to whether you actually can get the figure to stand upright. This can also aid for the fact that he does have ball joints in his feet, and because he does have the ball joints in his feet, you can also angle those toes slightly, again, to still compensate for the fact that you've got the legs bent. So this is probably how I may display some of the figures and not necessarily, not necessarily drop the figure. There we go. That's going to be how I'm probably going to display some of the figures, is uh, maybe in a running pose. The Leaf Shield Mega Man, I probably won't have in a running pose, but I think it might be fun just to do that with uh, some of these. Eventually, if I do get the original Mega Man in those blue colors, ooh, can't wait if I can hopefully find it. Uh, uh, definitely going to be pu probably putting him in a running pose as well, because that's, after all, the thing that Mega Man does so well. Yes, really, enough credit should be given to the ball joints located in Mega Man's heels. It really does allow for proper flat footing, at least on one of the foot, at least one of the feet. And because the feet are so large, it does compensate well enough that you could have Mega Man in a somewhat quasi-running pose. By the way, Mega Man, I'm so sorry for dropping you at the very end of this review. I hope you're okay. Um, as for picking these ones up, here's the problem. I wasn't able to find these at all, but thank goodness for the generosity and the search capacity of one viewer, Bill, who was not only able to find these, but able to pick these up and send these my way. I'm really, really excited to uh, have a look at Dr. Wiley, so probably going to have a look at him in the upcoming review. Oh, I just gave it away. And maybe in my travels, maybe if I can even see online, I'll see if I can find the original blue Mega Man. Because, of course, as good as the Mega Mans are in their various different colors and various different weapon outfits, you'd still want to get yourself the original blue bomber Mega Man. So I'll see if I can find it. Uh, speaking of weapons and speaking of the bosses themselves, again, why? Why could they not have just given them whatever ability Mega Man is currently sporting as something that could have been attached to his cannon. I had already expressed the difficulty of doing that with, of course, the Leaf Shield Mega Man, because it's not really something he's firing, it's something that's kind of rotating around him. But at the very least, for electricity to be shot out of his cannon, this is something could be quite easily accomplished, Funko. And shame on you for the fact that you didn't include weapon accessories. Either way, though, again, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, uh, they should be, as far as I know, available at your local EB Games and GameStop locations. If you have successfully found these in your local areas, let me know what stores you were able to find them. Or if you've managed to pick these up for yourself, let me know what you guys think of the figures. I always like to discuss toy talk with you guys in the comments section. So diligently I try to be with replying to all the comments that you guys leave down below. So let those comments run wild like Hulkamania and uh, I'll do my best to reply to every single one of them that's listed in the comment section down below. Speaking of down below, if you are new to this channel and dig in this guy's content, thank you for that by the way. Oh, that's so nice. You really shouldn't have. But you haven't subscribed yet. What to do, what to do. Well, the easiest solution to that problem, mister, or missus, is that you can hit that subscribe button that's just below this video and make sure as well you turn on your bell notifications. That's pronto. That is your priority, pronto, yeah, to turn on your bell notifications so that you're notified any when any new videos are coming onto this channel. And with the frequency and the sheer volume of videos coming onto this channel so often, you want to make sure that you're not missing out on any of that good stuff. Self-proclaimed, of course, by this humble reviewer. Make sure as well, why not, hit this like button that's also right below this video as well. Let me know what you guys think of the video and uh, stay tuned because like I said, we're going to have a look at Dr. Wiley in the upcoming review. Uh, why not? It was a freebie. I figured I'd just give you guys the FYI uh, 411 on that. So Dr. Wiley will be coming up in the next review, so stay tuned for that. It would be just a shame if I put something else afterwards. And everybody's like, where's Dr. Wiley? Where's Dr. Wiley? Yeah, sorry about that. Butterfingers struck again. But no, Dr. Wiley will be coming up at least in one of the upcoming reviews so stay tuned for that and let me know what you guys think of these Mega Man figures down below and I'll see you guys next time